This is Sauron, and Sauron has one of the most absurd storylines in all of Lord of the Rings. How do you go from most powerful being in an entire storyline to getting beaten by a little slimy gremlin who lost his footing on a volcano? Well, you have to think about it from his perspective, because it is just frankly ridiculous. Now think about it. You are Sauron. You are the Lord of Darkness. The only thing you care about is power. And that is it. So how do you get power? Well, you trick the other races with rings. Gestures of goodwill. And I mean, you're thinking, well, this is genius. They wear the rings and I have their control. Especially those men. Those men seem pretty easy to manipulate. But of course, there were ones that didn't like that idea. In fact, they referred to it as tyranny, whereas you just thought of it as a solid business model. And that's really the start of your downfall, because even with the one ring, other people can still get lucky enough to beat you. And that's exactly what happened. Some human takes a wild swing at you as you decided for some inexplicable reason to reach out your hand towards him and not just smash him with your mace and he cut off your finger, taking the ring from you. Don't know why you decided to do that, don't know why you didn't just smash his face in, but we, we all make mistakes, you, you are the Lord of Darkness, you are not perfect, but anyway, that happened. But this is where it gets ridiculous. The guy has your ring, the ring. And he's gone into Mount Doom, he's getting ready to throw it in the fire. Old Elrond, the, the King of the Elves, is like, do it, man, do it. And inside you're like, no, oh, man, if you do it, I'm actually going to die. Because, you know, as long as the ring still lives, you can still survive. And guess what? All humans are actually just magpies in disguise. And that guy, well, he gets greedy and takes it for himself. And he's thinking to himself, what could possibly go wrong? Well, turns out everyone likes that ring. Next thing you know, the ring has vanished from all existence. You hit snooze on that whole taking over the world thing, and you wait and wait and wait. And 2,000 years pass, and you hear nothing about this ring. But that's not going to stop you from trying to conquer the world. But this time though, there'll be no slip ups. There'll be no mistakes. You are playing for the keeps. So you pull some strings, you get Saruman on board, the White Wizard, one of the most glorious and powerful people on Middle Earth, except for yourself of course. And I mean, he's a good hire, he's a real company man, he, he's innovating actual creatures. He, developed an entire race called Urukai. They're pretty disgusting, all things considered, but they do the job and you respect that. And with the Palantir, you have instantaneous communication between you two, so everything is great. One day though, as you're preparing to <laughs> get ready to conquer the world, one of your minions comes up to you and says, Sir, we've got some news on the ring. News on the ring? You're not pranking me again like last time, are you? God damn, man. We wait 2,000 years and you're saying now you have a lead on the ring? Uh, uh yes, yes, sir. There's a... We found, like, this skeletal creature walking around the swamp and we, we sort of tortured him and he told us about Baggins and the Shire? The Shire, the place full of hobbits that just sit around eating all day. Uh, uh yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, it, it appears so. You're, no, you're pranking me. No. Very clever. Yeah, you think you could make it so absurd that I might actually believe you this time, but I don't forget your other little pranks, you little shit. Oh, if I had half a body, I would actually stab you. No, no, sir, we're, we're serious. We, we actually do have a lead on the ring, okay? Great. Oh, should we send someone to go? You, you haven't sent anyone yet? You get a lead on the ring? You wait for my permission? After the thing we waited 2,000 years to find? You're waiting for my permission? Just send the Nazgul's, you moron! Oh, quite right, sir. That's pretty good news, all things considered. I mean, you actually have a solid lead on the ring now, and it looks like your your imbecile orcs are actually going to do something useful for a change, and the Nazgul's, they've only been sitting around for the last, like, 2,000 years, so now they actually have something to do. And I mean, you just send one Nazgul down, I mean, what are the Shire going to do? The, the Hobbits, they don't fight, they just sit around drinking tea all day. And a few days pass, and then you see a little Hobbit in front of you one day, and he's just chilling around, you see the ring on his finger, and you're like, wow, man, I see you, so that's what you look like. And he freaks out, takes off the ring, because obviously, like, pretty intimidating to see a giant corporeal eye. Now I know my enemy. I've seen the Hobbit. Everything is good. Now, how could we possibly lose this? And then one of your minions comes up and is like, Sire, we've got news on the ring. Yes, I saw the Hobbit that has it. It's, it's nice. Like, he should. this should be a breeze, a walk in the park. I have destroyed kingdoms. So, do you have the ring? Uh, 
Not exactly, sir. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, sir, um, we sent all of the Nazgul's, like plural, and they had them on this like hilltop thing, and they got a good stabbing on the, the, the Hobbit, but then some guy came out and set them on fire and they ran away. You're telling me the Nazgul, THE Nazgul, ran away because of a little bit of fire. They are immortal. I'm a fire being. You would think that the fire wouldn't have an effect on them. Yeah, it seems that it does, sir, and they, they, and they don't like it at all. So, no ring. <laughs> It appears not, no sir. But we did stab him, as I said, so he probably will die at some point. We could just take off his corpse, right? Are you kidding me right now? This isn't real life. It's a hobbit. Time passes and the hobbit carrying the ring kind of disappears from sight. And while you're waiting, you don't want to let your other plans not come to fruition, so you decide that it's time to conquer Gondor and Rohan. But you know, obviously, like, tears you apart because you know the ring is out there. You know it's within your grasp. All that stands in your way is a goddamn hobbit. And and the Nazgul and the wizard are failing at every turn. Saruman even had Gandalf in his tower and somehow let that guy escape. Like, how is that possible? And every few weeks, you get a, an update that makes your non-existent blood boil. Sir, they made it to Rivendell. Sir, they made a fellowship of the ring. Now there's nine of them headed by a Gandalf character. The same guy that Saruman had in his tower. Yes, sir. Of course. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Sir, they entered the mines of Moria. Moria? Moria? Really? Moria? Why? What the hell? Sir, they, they've made it out of the mines of Moria. Wow, okay. That's a, that's an impressive feat. It doesn't look like the Gandalf character is with them anymore. Wait, really? What happened to him? Uh, all reports says he got taken by a Balrog. <laughs> pretty good as we oh my god that's some good news for once Gandalf is gone so you're feeling a bit relieved and then you get news that that Frodo guy well he split up from the rest of the team and the only person he's taken with him is his gardener and finally you're thinking well this is your chance no armies no Gandalf just two hobbits how hard could it be to take them and your Nazgul have ended up being about as useful as a chocolate teapot and of course there's Saruman and my god you gave him one job. Okay, well, it's a big job. Overthrow Rohan. For all metrics, it was going pretty smoothly. He had poisoned the king, he had deported the entirety of the Rohirrim, and yet, one day, your little minion comes up to you. Sire? Yes, little minion. Um, it's about Helm's Deep. What about Helm's Deep? Uh, we lost. What? Uh, yes, sire. It, it was a big defeat. Yes. No shit. It was a big defeat. You had 10,000 men against 300. How does that happen? Well, Gandalf. Gandalf is alive? It appears so, yes, sir. Um, well, he came with the Rohirrim, and then they flanked us. Why, why would you not? Okay, well, that, that, that's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Where's Saruman now? He's not picking up his Palantir. Um, yeah, about that. What, what, what? What do you mean about that? Uh, we lost Isengard as well, sir. How did we lose Isengard? Right? How? How did we lose that? Well, it appears, sir, that some Ents came. Ents? You know, the talking tree, sir. So let me get this straight. We lost 10,000 of our best soldiers sieging against 300 humans. And then Isengard got taken by some talking trees. I got that correct, right? Yes, sir. That's exactly what happened. But there was one thing that came of this, another hobbit appeared to you when he touched the Palantir, which was very interesting. You decided to give him the old jump scare, because you know, making hobbits poo themselves a little bit is just so much fun. But you tell him your evil plan, you basically show him a picture of the White Tree of Gondor burning, because, you know, why not tell him your evil plan? What is he gonna do? He's a goddamn hobbit. What's the worst that could happen? He's not like he's gonna tell the people of Rohan to ride to Gondor to save them. Okay, but still. Things are not going perfectly, but you're still in the game. You can still conquer Minas Tirith. You still got the forces to wipe out all of men. Okay, you lost 10,000 Orochrae. That's fine. Okay, you lost Isengard. That's fine too. 
you can still do this. you still got power to do it. But you should need to strike while the iron's hot. Even though Rohan just beat you, they're crippled, they're hamstrung. You can still capitalize on this opportunity and go and do the damage to the other human civilization, Minas Tirith. They don't have a king anymore, and they're just a bunch of hapless losers. There is no way this can go sideways, right? Uh, Sire, I have some news. About, about Gondor, about Minas Tirith, like, I guess we won handedly, right? Because, yes, we sent so many things, including elephants. I can't imagine the elephants last. Uh, not exactly, sir. Okay, what happened this time? Well, sir, it appears that we lost. Okay, let me guess. Um, something really absurd, like a ghost army came and killed our entire squad. Uh, actually, sir... No. No, you're kidding. This is all just a prank, isn't it? You're really pranking me, aren't you? There is no way this is real. Um, and also, sir, the Witch King is dead. Um... How? No man can kill him. It wasn't a man that killed him. He died because of a technicality? Yes, sir, it appears so. Okay, so... Again, we've lost Minas Tirith to a bunch of ghosts on a ship and a legal loophole. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Oh, the human army is at the door of Mordor. Ugh, of course they are. Why wouldn't they be? Okay, but that's fine. At least they come to me. I still have enough forces to go and crush them. Send everyone. Send everyone, sir? Just send them all. The guy carrying the ring is going to be with them, I'm sure, because otherwise they wouldn't send so many people to do it. They're going to brute force their way in through the front door because there's nowhere else to come into Mordor from. Uh, what about Shelob's lair, sir? We lose a lot of men there. You think two hobbits are going to be able to sneak through Shelob's lair without dying? You're deranged, bro. Another all comes up. Uh, so I have some news. Yes. What is it? Can't you see I'm a little busy? I've got to send my mouth to go deal with this Aragorn guy claiming to be the next king of Gondor. Can't you see that might be a pressing concern? Oh, actually, sir, we uh, we found a hobbit outside of Shelob's lair. Really? Fantastic. So you have the ring then? Uh, uh, no. Not, not, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, he escaped. What do you mean? He escaped. Well, uh, yeah, it, it turns out there was another one that managed to come through and kill all of our orcs and urukai. You're telling me one hobbit came in and killed our entire prison tower and rescued the other hobbit that had our one ring? Uh, yes, it appears so, sir. And you didn't think that when you captured this fucking hobbit, you wouldn't station more guards or at least tell me? Uh, no, sir. How is it? That everyone around me drops the ball so goddamn much. If anything else goes wrong today, you swear you're just going to explode. And then a minute later, you see the Hobbit in front of you. He's in Mount Doom. He's actually there, but you know, thankfully, he's also looking like he's going to be corrupted. And you're just like, thank God, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> it turns out every creature in Middle Earth is corrupted by this thing, and you can breathe a sigh of relief because now you can just swoop down there and, and take the ring back for yourself. All of your plans are coming together. The ring is in your hands and everything is wonderful. Uh, sir, I have some good news and bad news. I think I already know the good news, my friend. I mean, <laughs> it's excellent news, actually. But what's the bad news? Well, sir, um, it turns out that golem creature we tortured to find the ring bit off the hobbit's finger and fell into the lava. Okay, okay. Just so we're clear. You're telling me the most pathetic creature in Middle Earth, the slimy swamp goblin, bit the finger off a hobbit and tripped and fell into some lava? Uh, yes sir, it seems so, sir. So that's it then. Yes sir, with the ring destroyed, well, so are you and me. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you want to subscribe, consider doing that as well. I just want to thank my members, Yuri, Lavender, and Alan. If you want to join them, the link is in the description. Thank you. Goodbye.